Hello friends, I am Dr. Fareen and let's take a quick review of hypertension in pregnancy. Here we'll be discussing some very basic concepts and some important facts that will help you solve most of the questions. Alright, so let's start. Gestation hypertension. What is gestation hypertension? Presence of blood pressure more than equal to 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury on two occasions at least four hours apart. Now this condition appears after 20 weeks of pregnancy and should get resolved before 12 weeks postpartum. If it is appearing before 20 weeks or is persisting even after 12 weeks after giving birth to the baby, then it will not be gestation hypertension. Alright? Second is preeclampsia. What is preeclampsia? Preeclampsia is all the features of gestational hypertension but now the patient will also have presence of protein in the urine. Alright? Patient can also have signs of end organ damage. Now what are the parameters of terming a patient having being proteinuric? So the terms for proteinuria are we just need to remember three values 0.3 more than 30 and 300 milligram. Urine protein is to creatine ratio more than 0.3. A dipstick value of 1 plus which corresponds to more than 30 milligram per deciliter of protein. And a 24 hour urine sample which shows 300 milligrams of protein in urine. Okay, so we need to remember only these three values. What are the signs of end organ damage? There are five signs. Uh, thrombocytopenia where the platelet count goes than less than 1 lakh. Renal insufficiency when the creatinine level is more than 1.1 or doubles up the baseline. Third is the liver involvement where the serum transaminase levels are twice the normal. Cerebral symptoms that the patient presents with uh, headache, visual symptoms, blurring of vision or pulmonary edema. Okay. Third is eclampsia. Now what is eclampsia? Eclampsia is presence of all the features of severe preeclampsia plus now the patient will also present with general tonic-clonic seizures, okay? So all these three uh, conditions, gestational hypertension, pre-eclampsia and eclampsia, they are presenting after 20 weeks of pregnancy and dissolving before 12 weeks postpartum. Now let's discuss two other terminologies. Chronic hypertension, what is it? It is hypertension which is seen before 20 weeks of pregnancy. All right, and it might not get resolved even 12 weeks after giving birth to the baby. Okay, and there's the last condition which is chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. So it is very clear that the blood pressure is uh, has risen before 20 weeks of pregnancy, but now the patient has symptoms of preeclampsia. So presence of protein in urine after 20 weeks of pregnancy presence of uh, high blood pressure again after 20 weeks of pregnancy and signs of end organ damage again coming after 20 weeks of pregnancy in addition to increased blood pressure which was present initially uh, before 20 weeks of pregnancy all right so again to summarize all of this if you were to draw a line okay and let's call this as 20 weeks okay and this is 12 weeks okay so here we have gestational hypertension all right here we also have what preeclampsia all right which is gestational hypertension plus protein in urine or end organ damage right here we also have eclampsia which is pre-eclampsia plus seizures right now over here what do we have before 20 weeks of pregnancy till after 12 weeks this is what this is chronic hypertension all right this is chronic hypertension okay hope i'm clear now let's uh, go through few of the questions so first of all we see that a patient who is 28 year old primary gravida 
she comes to the ANC OPD. Her blood pressure is 150 by 100, right? Urine dipstick protein was 1 plus, okay? So, and her values are given over here. So, platelet is 1.5. What is the diagnosis? Her blood pressure is more than obviously 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury. Urine protein is 1 plus. So, definitely it is what? Pre-eclampsia. Okay? Next, a 28-year-old priming gravida comes to the ANC OPD. Her blood pressure is 150 by 100. Urine dipstick is protein is nil. Okay? So, but in the CBC blood workup, we see that the platelet level is 80,000. So, she has signs of end organ damage, right? Thrombocytopenia, where the platelet is less than 1 lakh. So, what is she? She is again preeclampsia. Okay? Third, a 28-year-old priming gravida again comes to the OPD with blood pressure 150 by 100. Urine dipstick is nil and platelet is also normal. What is she? She is gestational hypertension. Alright? Hope I am clear on this. Now, management. What is the main principle in managing these patients? So, it is very simple. Whenever the diastolic blood pressure is more than 100 millimeters of mercury or the systolic blood pressure is more than 150 millimeters of mercury. So, remember these two values are irrespective of each other. Then we will start antihypertensives in the patient. Okay. So, if the blood pressure is 150 by 90 or if the blood pressure is 140 by 100, we will start antihypertensives. All right. When do we admit the patient? So, when the blood pressure is more than equal to 160 by 110 millimeters of mercury or there is presence of proteinuria, then we will admit the patient. Presence of proteinuria 1 plus is clearly a diagnosis of preeclampsia. So, do we admit all patients of preeclampsia? Yes. We will admit these patients of preeclampsia. We will do the basic blood workup. We will see whether the blood pressure is stable or not. Only when we show that the patient is stable after admitting, after all her blood workups, after all the fundus examination, then only we will discharge the patient. Okay? The third is if the patient has signs of impending eclampsia. So, what is signs of impending eclampsia? If the patient is having severe preeclampsia, where the blood pressure is more than equal to 160 by 110 millimeters of mercury, then we will start magnesium sulfate in the patients. All right. So these are the basic three principles of management. So when to start antihypertensive, when to admit the patient and when to start magnesium sulfate. Okay. So let's go through another question, set of questions. A 32 year old patient has come to us. Her blood pressure is 140 by 90. Urine protein is nil. Okay. So will we start antihypertensive drugs? When were we starting antihypertensive? When the diastolic is, when the diastolic is more than 100 or systolic is more than 150, okay? So, over here, will we start antihypertensive drugs? No. Will we admit the patient? When are we admitting the patient? When the BP is more than 160 by 110, right? Or when there is presence of protein which is 1 plus right so we will not admit her either second question her bp is 150 by 104 and urine protein is nil so will we start antihypertensive drugs yes the diastolic is more than 100 so we will give her antihypertensive do we admit this patient is she falling in this criteria no we will not admit this patient now the blood pressure is 150 by 108 sorry but the urine protein is 1 plus Antihypertensive drugs, we will start because diastolic is more than 100. Do we admit this patient? Yes. Why? Because the urine protein is 1 plus and she is a case of preeclampsia. Okay. Blood pressure is 140 by 94. Urine protein is 1 plus. What do you do? We will not start antihypertensive drugs, but we will definitely admit the patient. Okay. For the further workup of the patient and to further monitor her. Blood pressure is 160 by 114, but urine protein is nil. Okay, so antihypertensive drugs, we will definitely start. Do we admit this patient? Although the protein is nil, but definitely the blood pressure is more than 160 by 110. 
so we will definitely admit this patient all right next is bp is 154 by 104 and urine protein is 3 plus so what do we do diastolic is more than 100 and systolic is more than 150 definitely anti hypertensive we will definitely admit her because she is more than 1 plus urine protein and since it is a sign of impending eclampsia we will start magnesium sulfate in these patients all right hope i'm clear on this when do we need to deliver this patient so if a patient is of gestation hypertension we deliver her by 37 weeks but if she is pre eclamptic then we deliver by 34 to 36 plus 6 weeks all right coming to magnesium sulfate so magnesium sulfate it is also known as the macpy trial which was done on this uh, what is the mechanism of action so it has a central inhibitory effect it inhibits the glutamate and activates adenosin well these are the things which we just need to mug it up because these things have been asked in the exam regularly and it blocks the nmda receptor okay second thing is it is also a calcium channel blocker so we should not mix it up with other calcium channel blockers like nifedipine which is uh, given to decrease the blood pressure and the third point over here i would like to mention is that it decreases the motor end plate sensitivity to acetylcholine so all these points the central inhibitory effect it blocks the calcium channel and it decreases the motor end plate sensitivity to acetylcholine because of this it is used as an anti convulsant okay because of these factors it is used as an anti convulsant other two additional features in for max sulfate is that it's a vasodilator it increases the blood flow to the brain uterus and kidney it is also a tocolytic because it is blocking the peripheral action of calcium so it can be used in uh, preterm labor also okay and it is also given in patients who deliver before 30 weeks of pregnancy because it has a neuroprotection effect it is neuroprotective for the baby all right so these three factors point number 1 point number 2 where it is blocking the calcium channel and decreases motor end plate sensitivity to acetylcholine are the factors because of which it is used as an anti convulsant all right so how do we give magnesium sulfate okay so magnesium sulfate is given by two regimens the first is intravenously followed by the intramuscular which is the prechart regimen Here we give a four gram of magnesium sulfate as a twenty percent solution intravenously over three to five minutes. What do we understand by all this complex thing? So what do we first understand by a twenty percent solution? Twenty percent solution means twenty gram of magnesium sulfate. Twenty grams of magnesium sulfate is present in hundred ml of water. We need how much? We need four grams, right? So for four gram, how much ml should be there? Simple mathematics, hundred into four by twenty, which is twenty ml. Okay. So twenty ml in twenty ml, four gram will be present. Now normally a vial of magnesium sulfate, which comes in the market, it has a fifty percent solution. which means that 50 g is present in 100 ml okay and it comes in in a 2 ml solution okay so we can write as like this also that 100 ml has 50 g so how much does a 2 ml contain 2 ml will contain again 50 into 2 by 100 which is equal to 1 g so normally a vial which comes in the market is one vial contains 1 g okay so one vial contains 1 g we need how much we need 4 g so for 4 g we need four vials right and one vial contains how much ml 2 ml so four vials will contain how much 8 ml but how much do we need we need 20 ml so what we will do that we will dilute this magnesium sulfate in 20 minus 8 is equal to 12 
so we will dilute it with 12 ml of normal saline we'll make a 20 ml solution okay so to this 8 ml we will add 12 ml of normal saline and that is how we will come to 4 grams of magnesium sulfate in a 20% solution all right which we will give as intravenously second is that a uh, 10 gram of 50% magnesium sulfate is given immediately 5 gram intramuscularly on each buttock okay so simultaneously after intravenous dose we give 5 gram on each buttock so in the market as i told you 50 gram is already coming and uh, one vial contains how much 1 gram so for 5 gram we will need 5 vials 5 vials for one buttock and 5 vials for another buttock so this one is simpler all right and uh, we give it till 24 hours after delivery or last convulsion whichever is later okay second is the continuous iv uh, infusion which is the zushpan regimen here we give a loading dose of 4 to 6 gram diluted in 100 ml of intravenous fluid and it is given over 15 to 20 minutes this is the loading dose followed by the maintenance dose where the magnesium sulfate is given as 1 to 2 gram per hour as an iv infusion okay so we need to monitor the these patients for magnesium toxicity and what are the most important points they have always asked this as a question it's a very favorite topic here what is our therapeutic magnesium sulfate level it is 4 to 7 milli equivalents per liter okay and uh, loss of knee jerk is the first sign loss of patellar reflex of magnesium toxicity which appears at 10 milli equivalents per liter followed by respiratory depression which is at 12 milli equivalents per liter and cardiac arrest is at 50 milli equivalents per liter all right what are the absolute contraindications of magnesium sulfate this is also come as an ini ct exam question myasthenia gravis and deranged renal function okay so uh, these are the absolute contraindications why is a deranged renal function absolute contraindication because mast cell is excreted by kidney so if the kidney is not functioning well it will lead to magnesium toxicity all right so just in case if there is magnesium toxicity then what is the antidote for that the antidote for magnesium toxicity is 10% of calcium gluconate all right this is the antidote This was all about hypertension in pregnancy thank you so much